Well, hello, St. Anthony Park, scientists and engineers. Hope you're doing well. Um, coming at you today and this week to uh, talk to you about some more things that relate to earth materials. Um, you'll recall we've done a few things that, that relate to the Earth's surface. We started out with doing some things that related to erosion. And then we started to look at some events that occur, could occur to affect the surface of the Earth. Um, like looking at flooding, how water runs to the ocean. And then last week uh, we were looking at some things that related to uh, volcanoes. Um, so that's what we've been doing. What we're going to do now is we're going to move to more specific actual uh, landform and rock formations. Um, and we're going to specifically get to looking at, at some rock formations. And because these rock formations took place over millions of years, um, what we're going to do is speed things up with some models that I have. Um, so our guiding question for today is how are different rocks formed? So we're just going to look at some uh, different rocks and how they were formed. Um, I don't have all the different types of rocks that I'd like to have here because they're at school, but we're going to make do with what we have, uh, which we've been doing during these times. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start out by taking a look at the earth. Okay. And the earth has some main parts, and you might be wondering, well, why, Mr. Schrenker, are you holding up this egg that's died? Um, well, it's an egg that I had that is getting kind of old, and it's hard-boiled, and it actually makes a great model of the earth. So what I'd like us to do is, before we get to these specific rocks, is take a look at this model of the earth and what some of the parts are of this, this model. So what I have, again, is a hard-boiled egg. And I'm going to go and take a cross section of it as if it were we were taking a cross section of the earth, which we know we couldn't do. And if we could do, wouldn't be good for the earth. So what I'm going to do is cut this in half and quickly talk to you about its parts. So I have a, a cross section going here. And you'll notice that first there's the layer of the shell. And this is pretty good to scale. We've talked about, you know, things being to scale before. The shell, we would consider the crust, okay? So this is the crust. And then the um, yellow, the, I'm sorry, the white part here would be the mantle, okay? So we have crust, mantle, and then the inner portion of the earth, and this is a little bit bigger per scale than it really would be. But that's the core, and there's two parts to the core, the inner core and outer core. And there's some neat metals that are um, consisted of in the core that we're not going to get into details of right now. But these are the main sections um, of the earth and the cross section of the earth and the earth's surface. So um, we have cross, mantle, core, and in that core we said inner core and outer core. So we can kind of keep these things in mind as we move forward. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the three main types of, of rocks. So we're going to look at those. And uh, I'm going to do that through models. Okay, so we're going to take a look at some models of, of two of the types of rocks. And actually last week we did a model of the other type. So uh, the first one that we're going to take a look at is sedimentary rock and basically what it is it's several rocks and minerals um you know sediment we would call that kind of get smushed together over time so gravity would help create them if they're on top of or underneath some h2o or ice they kind of get smushed together so we can think of like mud and rocks so i was thinking of what would be a good model of that and then I thought, hmm, while I was eating my lunch, I was thinking, well, you know what? I think I have one right in front of me. So what I have right here is some parts of my sandwich that I was making. I took the bread and I divided it into three sections. Okay, so we're going to pretend this is like a layer of mud or rock or what have you. And then what I'm going to do is to, to represent kind of a different formation of that mud is I am going to go and put some, some peanut butter on here and spread it out as if it's mud, okay? Eh, let's put a little jelly, okay? We'll put some of that on to represent a different mineral, 
that got on here. And then uh, I have some sprinkles here. I'm gonna put that on. Put that on like so. And then I'll go and take some chocolate chips, put them in here. Another layer of sediment, okay? So I have all this on, and then I have this other layer of sediment I'm gonna put on. And we're gonna repeat this process. I'm gonna switch up the order a little bit, put some jelly on. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a, a nice sedimentary rock. And then I have some peanut butter. I get that mushed in there. Sometimes the sediment can kind of smush together a bit. More chocolate chips. Okay. And uh, a few sprinkles. So this is again representing the different types of, of uh, rocks and minerals that get pushed together. Okay. Now, if only I had a way to kind of push it together. Wait a minute. Okay, so I've got these layers of rocks and minerals. I have an idea. All right, I'm gonna put it right into this bag right here. Okay, and then I need to smoosh it evenly. Okay, I'm gonna close this up. All right, so I have my layers of sediment here. Now I need to add some pressure. So what I'm gonna do is take just a chair right here. I'm gonna set it here, and I am going to take a seat. All right, so I'll take a seat right here and, ah, comfy. All right, so now what I have is some layers of sediment that are coming together. I've added some pressure, some gravity, if you will. I'm gonna get up and, whoa, look what we have here, a model of a sedimentary rock. All right, so now I'm gonna take a cross section of it. So geologists, the scientists that study rocks, which we're gonna be the next few weeks, geologists, what they do is they will go and take cross sections of earth material to learn about, you know, hey, how long has this been around? Um, what kind of sediment is there? And it can tell us a lot about our earth's history. So you can see the layers of sediment that are there. Okay, all kinds of layers of sediment. All right, my model of a sedimentary rock. Here's the other sedimentary rock. And uh, this one has some layers of sediment that got smushed together. Which one should I have for lunch? Well, I think I know which one. All right, um, so let's put our sedimentary rock right over here. All right, next one is called metamorphic. So here again, by the way, ooh, that kind of looks like my edible sedimentary rock. Um, we're gonna take a look at a metamorphic rock. Metamorphic, you might think of the word metamorphosis, meaning change, well, like when an organism goes through change. Um, this is what happens with metamorphic rocks. What happens is a lot of times there are other types of rocks, like they're igneous rocks, which we'll talk about in a minute, or they're sedimentary rocks, and then for whatever reason, there's heat and pressure, and that heat and pressure will put it underneath the Earth's surface, will really mush this, this together. Um, and so rocks like quartz, I happen to have one here, shale, um, these are some examples, uh, slate examples of metamorphic rocks. Marble, they are all types of metamorphic rocks. So, but I was thinking, okay, how could I show heat and pressure from my model and sediments? And voila, you, this might look familiar to you. I have a waffle iron right here. And so I'm gonna put a layer of sediment right here. Okay, here's one layer of sediment. And then I'm going to put some minerals in here. They're going to get in our layers uh, into our sediment. And then let's see, I'll pick a couple other minerals. I have some more edible minerals right here. And I'm just going to push a couple of those down in here. Okay. And now I am going to speed up time. I'm going to speed up millions and millions of years here. And I'm going to add my heat and pressure. I need even more heat and pressure than when I sat on that sedimentary rock formation. So, metamorphic rock. Now, through the magic of filming and television, I have a completed model of a metamorphic rock. Look, come on and take a look at this. So, what I have is this model where we can see some minerals that were heated up and, and kind of melted and smushed together. 
So I have that. There's our completed model of a metamorphic rock. Hmm. Mm. These rocks are delicious. All right. So that's our model of how a metamorphic rock is formed. All right. And lastly, last week was about volcanoes, of course. Excuse me. I got a few pieces of rock in my throat. Um, so as you recall, last week was about igneous rocks. And I just brought in a couple of samples of those. I'm not, um, igneous rocks can be formed couple of ways, uh, coming from inside the Earth's surface um, through the magma or lava coming out of a volcano, or there could be a large rift or crack in the Earth's surface. In northern Minnesota, millions of years ago, there was a, a crack in the Earth's surface about 50 miles wide, and all this, this magma lava came up and it cooled, and when it did, it created igneous rocks. So people used to be confused and say, well, we didn't have volcanoes, really. Did we up in northern Minnesota at one time? Because there's so many igneous rocks. Um, I'm gonna show you just a couple of types. Pumice, which I think we're familiar with, that, that has a lot of air holes in it, and basically, we can think of lava being cooled and leaving these little um, air, air pockets of air in them. And the other one is granite. And granite is usually, the, the pumice is cooled fast because it comes to the surface of the earth pretty quickly. The, however, the granite, that actually cools real slowly and that's underneath the earth's surface. Think of a blanket being on it so it doesn't cool as fast. And when rocks cool slowly, they have bigger crystals. So this granite you can see has bigger crystals than a lot of rocks. You can see the crystals and that's because it cooled, it was really hot at one time, and it cooled real slowly, so it had that blanket on it. So, again, our three rock types are sedimentary, that was the sandwich, sedimentary sandwich, and then we had our metamorphic, our waffle, and then our igneous rocks, like a model of a volcano would be our model, um, and I brought some samples of those. All right, friends, so, what we're going to do for next week is I have a couple of things I'd like you to do. All right. I have a couple of more instructional videos that relate to rock types. I'd like you to take a look at. And then what I'd like you to do, oh, excuse me. I think my metamorphic rock is done. Um, and then what I'd like you to do is we are going to, um, your assignment is you can do, you have three choices, but you must do at least one of them and submit it on, on uh, Schoology. So we have, you could either find two rocks, any rocks around your home, um, and just tell me about their properties. Maybe you have an idea if it's a sedimentary, metamorphic, or igneous rock. Um, but uh, go ahead and, and check them out. Just share with me their properties. Rough, smooth, I think it looks like a this type of rock and why, okay? Your other option is to make a model of one of the, the rock types like I did. If you wanna make an edible model, that's great. Talk to the adults that you live with first to make sure that's okay. Um, but you could make a model of at least one of them and submit me a photo or video of it. And then lastly, the other choice is you could make a sketch of each of the rock type formations, sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous, all right? And just as review, we talked quickly at the beginning about the cross section of our earth, and we have crust, mantle, and core. All right, St. Anthony Park, scientists and engineers, I want you to have a great rest of your week. Let me know if you have any questions by emailing me.